Hey, this is Brock Lemires, and in this video I'm going to show you how to do a Chrome River expense report at Montana State University. This is uh, March 6, 2023. Uh, some people let me know that my last video has kind of been outdated because Chrome River continually updates itself, and so some of the buttons have moved and some of the features have gone away. So this will be relevant for who knows long. Okay, so the big thing is Chrome River is used uh, in part to do expense reports for charges on the MSU P card or your MSU visa. So whenever you make a charge, the first step is to save the receipt as a PDF. This will make your life very easy. Then you are gonna name your PDF something descriptive. And I will tell you, this makes your life much easier if you always name it with the same kind of convention of put the date, I do it the year first, and then I do the month, uh, and then I do the year, or excuse me, the day, and then I do who the vendor was, this one happened to be Amazon, and then I put the amount, and I instead of putting a dot, I, I use the letter P, so this one happened to be in the amount of 5680, uh, okay? So I rename that like that, and <clears throat> I look at this thing, and I'm like, okay, there it is, I have, 50, the charge was to Amazon, 5680, and this was for some lab supplies. So now I have that receipt filed or named, and then what I do is I put folders for each like grant index. So this one will happen to go on, uh, uh, an, uh, this one will go on this particular grant that I have. So under that grant folder, I have expenses, and then I put this receipt in there, and it makes it really easy to find when you go into Windows uh, File Explorer, and you can search for the, for the actual amount, okay? All right, so we have our receipt, and now we wait for the reminder that our expense report is due. And so it's Monday, and lo and behold, here is my friendly reminder for a couple expenses that I need to do reports for. So in this situation, here's the expense that I, I'm going to do a report for, 5680. This reminder email, these come out twice a week if you have uh, if you have charges in Chrome River. And what I've learned is that it is better to wait until you get this reminder email before sending your receipt into Chrome River. And that's just because if you do a lot of expense reports, what will end up happening is that it, you just get too much stuff into Chrome River and sometimes you can't even see everything. So what I've learned is that over the years, I wait for that reminder to come out and then I know that my PCARD charge is in Chrome River and then I send my receipt in, okay? All right, so let's log into Chrome River and see what's in there and then we'll send a receipt in. So the website is montana.edu, Chrome River, and you pop into here, hit that, then it does your single sign-on, so you log in 20 times in a row, and you come into Chrome River, okay? So when you get in here, what you'll see is your credit card items that are in here that need reports, and then you'll see if you have any receipts. So what you wanna first do is come into eWallet, and that will then show you an itemized list of what's in there. So here's the one that I'm gonna do right now, 5680. Notice that there are no receipts. Uh, it says no receipts over here, but if I wanted to see my receipts, I'd say all, and it doesn't show any receipts. So all will show you the charges and the receipts. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to send my receipt to Chrome River. Okay, so what I come over here is I start an email and you are going to send it to receipt at ca1.chromeriver.com. You type that one time and it will always pop up for the rest of time, okay? So you this is the way you get receipts into Chrome River. Now what I'm gonna do is I will attach the PDF to this email and this is very important. Don't put anything in the body of your email and then in the subject, put the amount. This is where looking at your file name is very important because you can see that the amount of this receipt, 5680, so I do 56.80. This tells Chrome River that it's a receipt. It doesn't tell it what it's, what it's for or who the vendor is, but it tells it the amount. And that's super important because when you go into Chrome River, then you can see which receipt has or is for what amount, and then you can attach it to the actual PCAR charge. So put 56.80, don't put a dollar sign, and always put a dot, and always put two digits after the decimal point. So that is all you do. So now I'm gonna hit send, and that's gonna send this to Chrome River. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wait for the email that tells me, hey, a receipt just showed up. Okay, so the email has arrived. 
and there it is, it says I've received your receipt. The reason that's kind of uh, neat to wait for is because then it tells you you're in Chrome River. You could be in Chrome River and just sit there and, and keep updating and updating, but I've found that it's like, just email it in there, and then once it arrives, now you can go into Chrome River and actually do the report. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back into Chrome River, and I'm sitting here with credit card statements, and I look at all, to see how many receipts are in here. And notice that the receipt came in and it has an amount with it. And that's what's really important because that's what tells you, that's how you know what P card charge to associate with it. So I look at it, it's like, here it is, whatever. And that what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click and hold and I'm gonna drag that on top of my P card charge and that associates the receipt with that P card charge. So now I have those two linked and now I'm gonna do my expense report. So I go ahead and click on this and I say, add to report and I can create a new expense report. Okay, so here's a couple things to keep in mind. You can group multiple charges onto one expense report, except that the way that they like you to name things is they want you to name it where they put vendor, your last name, purpose. And so what they really want here is something like Amazon, and then my last name, and then the purpose. So this will be like lab supplies. And then what I've learned to do is I put a fourth field on here that tells me what index to charge us to. So I'll do like, uh, whatever, this project nickname that I have. And here's what's, in, what, what's important about this. Number one, they want you to name the expense report with the same vendor. So if you had like four different vendors, you wouldn't do that on one expense report. You would do it as four different expense reports. And I'll tell you, it's once you get used to this, it's really fast to do expense reports. So it's, it's a lot easier to do a whole bunch of smaller expense reports than try to group like 20 charges onto one because you have to, the naming doesn't match with what they recommend. Uh, and it, it just is a lot easier to do. In addition, Notice that I had two charges to Amazon. Those are going to two different indices. So indices. So I have to have two different expense reports for those. So in this situation, I'm just going to do an expense report for both of these Amazon charges and call it done. So I do Amazon last name purpose, and then I put a fourth optional field on here, which is a nickname of the grant I'm going to charge to. So and I'm going to copy that, and I'm going to paste that route down here into the vendor location purpose because there's two fields that kind of ask for the same thing. So then what you do is come in and go to your campus department. This is where you choose your college. So for me, it's College of Engineering. And then down here under report, you're either doing travel or non-travel for a faculty, okay? So I'm gonna do non-travel. So I've got that set up and I'm gonna now do save and that's gonna bring up the next form, the next step. So what it's gonna do is you have to choose kind of two things for each report. You have to choose the expense type and then you go in and you choose like the account code. So here you get these cartoon icons in here and for this particular thing, I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna do material, supplies and materials. Okay, so I click that and then I come down here and it brings everything in under supplies and material account code. That's where I then go and give it more detail. So what I do is I come in here and I'm gonna do laboratory supplies. Now, sometimes Chrome River will automatically assign this to one of these categories up here for you. So about 50% of the time you'll come in and you'll start at this screen and 50% of the time you'll start at this screen. And it can, can be kind of confusing until it, I realized what it was doing is it was automatically choosing a, an expense category for me and that's fine it's just that if i ever if it ever gets it wrong and sometimes it does just remember this cartoon here this icon it is a button and that's how you get back to this other screen for me 99 percent of all the things that i do are always laboratory supplies and then the last step of this is basically do the allocation which is going to be your index that you're going to charge it to okay so what i'm going to do is i have index indexes indices down here where i'm going to search for my thing, I can search by just a keyword and here's my one right here, improving cyber survivability. survivability. And there's my index right there. Here's a couple notes on this that's interesting. You can assign a charge to any index at MSU. So that's how if you somebody tells you, hey, just charge it to my account, you can just type in the 4W or whatever account code it is. And so it, it's a little interesting because you can make a mistake on here and you can in charge it to the wrong grant, or you can make a mistake on the code that you, you use. The good thing about that is that the fiscal shared service people watch this and they will catch your mistakes. So I, I routinely make a mistake where I choose laundry supplies instead of laboratory supplies. And 
I'll get an email. It's like, did you really buy laundry supplies or was it laboratory supplies? I'm like, oh, whoops, I screwed up again. And then if you choose somebody else's index that's not yours, you get an email pretty rapidly saying, hey, why are you charging to my account? So the good thing about this is it's kind of low, low stakes because somebody is going to be checking this for you. Okay, that's all you do is you got your supplies, you got your, the amount came in, you give it the account, uh, whatever this is, the account category, and then the account code, you hit save. It says, all right, you ready to do this? And you say submit, and then you say submit again, and it is done. And that is now an expense report, okay? So now here's, I'll show you really quick. Let's see how fast I can do the next one. I'm gonna come into eWallet, and I have this 6567. It's to Amazon, okay? And here's what I'm gonna do. I am gonna show you how fast I can do one of these uh, using the naming convention that I use for my receipts. Okay, so I open File Explorer and I go to, I file everything under research and I have all these folders in here, but really all I have to do is go search for a file that starts with 65P67 and it searches through there automatically for this particular amount and I hit return and it shows up right here. So then what I can do is I can just pull that over, go into email, start a new email, grab this, drag it over, and then I have my email that I'm sending to Chrome River, so I do receipts, boom, and I come down here. I know that the amount is 6567, so I go 65.67. I clear out the body, and boom, and it's away. So now I'm gonna wait until that thing shows up in Chrome River. Okay, so a couple minutes later, the email shows up, and I'm like, okay, it got my receipt for 65.67. All right, so I go back into Chrome River, and over here in credit card receipts, I see my charge, but I don't see the receipt because you have to hit all. And now I see my receipt, same amount, it automatically came in, so I grab it, I drag it onto this one, that associates the receipt with the charge. I I click it, I say add to report, and I'm gonna expense, create a new expense report. Okay, so I'm gonna do, Vendor, Amazon, last name, Lemire's. And I'm gonna call it, the purpose was lab supplies again. And then I'm gonna do this one on a different account. I'm gonna charge this to my RD account. So I copy and paste that down here because it's the same field, kind of, they kind of want the same information. Campus department, I'm under engineering, and then I choose non-travel, okay? I so say save. And then it asks me, what do I want to, what expense type is it? I come down, I'm doing supplies and materials. I come into here, I choose the account code, which is almost always for me, laboratory supplies. And then I come down here and I got to search for my allocation. Since I've used it before, it comes up right away. So this IRD, Lemire's Electrical Engineering, that's what I'm gonna charge this to. And now I am done. I hit save. And now it's gonna ask me twice, do you submit it? Are you sure you wanna submit it? I wanna submit it and voila, I have just now submitted it and it took me like two minutes to do it. And if I come in here into eWallet, I'm all cleared out and I'm ready to actually start work for the week. All right, that's it.